The year of the rooster is almost here, which means we must say goodbye to 2016's year of the monkey. To send it off in style, we're going to be spending the rest of this month looking at the characters from a story that features the world's most famous monkey, Journey to the West. So let's start out January to the West. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Puns. But looking at the story's real life inspiration, Xuanzang. The phoenix can fly only when its feathers are grown. Xuanzang was born in 602 AD during the Tang Dynasty, and like I said, his pilgrimage served as inspiration for the Chinese classic Journey to the West, as well as the main character of the same name. In the book, he was born to a recently appointed government official and a woman of immense beauty. While his mother was still pregnant with Xuanzang, they were travelling to his father's new job when bandits not only murdered and stole his father's identity, but also kidnapped and raped his mother. When Xuanzang was born, his mother was told by the gods that he would grow up to become a man known throughout the world. In order to protect him, she wrapped him in a piece of clothing, wrote a note in her own blood telling his origin story, and set him floating down the river on a plank of wood, Moses style. By comparison, the real Xuanzang had a much less interesting childhood. He was the youngest of four children and grew up in a highly educated household. His father died when he was nine years old, and he was converted into becoming a Buddhist monk by his brother. Journey to the West Xuanzang was found floating down the river by Buddhist monks and was raised in their ways. He later learned that in a previous life, he was the Golden Cicada, a favorite disciple of Buddha who accidentally fell asleep during a sermon and was reincarnated as a human as punishment. In the book, Xuanzang takes on the journey to retrieve the holy scriptures from India for two reasons. Number one being that he was doing the work of the goddess Guanyin, who sought to bring enlightenment to the people of the East. The second reason was to help Emperor Taizong, who escaped hell by making a vow that he would create a society to save the lost souls of China. In contrast to the book, the real Emperor Taizong forbade his journey to India in order to preserve national security. Xuanzang, after years of studying Buddhist texts in China, found that they were full of contradictions and decided to ignore the Emperor's command and secretly set off to study true Buddhism from its source in India. So in reality, he was actually more of a badass than the books would have you believe. In Journey to the West, he was mostly helpless in the face of danger. Thus, Guan Yin supplies him with three protectors, Zhu Baji the pig, Shu Wa Jing the sand demon, and the world famous Sun Wukong the monkey. We'll look at them some more in the next episodes, so make sure to come back soon. Together, they travel to India battling gods, demons, and bandits who believe that eating the monk's flesh would grant them immortality, all the while completing the 81 trials needed to achieve enlightenment and bring back the holy scriptures to China. There were no monsters for the real Xuanzang, but the journey was not an easy one. His pilgrimage lasted about 16 years and saw him traveling through the unrelenting heat of the Gobi Desert, evading thieves, sneaking past border guards, as well as being detained by King Chu Wentai. During his captivity, Xuanzang went on a hunger strike until the king finally granted him permission to leave. The king also provided him with official documentation, allowing his passage through to India on the condition that he would return after three years. Upon his long-awaited arrival to the Nalanda Monastery in India, Xuanzang studied Sanskrit and began his studies of the true Buddhist texts. He became incredibly knowledgeable of the Brahmana philosophy and combined Savastavada and Yogacara doctrines together to help create a more functional form of Mahayanism. Don't know what that means? Well. <laughs> Yeah, neither did I. Basically, it means that he stood from a philosophical perspective that combines aspects of physicality with that of the spiritual pursuit. In short, the dude studied a hell of a lot of doctrines, and I don't have enough time here to cover everything in detail. We'll just leave it that he was super smart, as he once in one sitting defeated 500 religious scholars in a spiritual debate. So yeah, the dude knew his stuff. Once he returned to China, he distributed relics, manuscripts, and other souvenirs that he brought back from India and began his lifelong mission preaching the good word and translating scriptures into Chinese. His knowledge was so highly regarded that he was offered an official position within the imperial court, but ultimately refused so that he could focus all his efforts on his work. He dutifully continued his work until his death in 664. From there, his teaching and translations of scriptures, particularly that of the Heart Sutra, helped promote Buddhism throughout Asia. But what is most interesting was that another text that he had put together had more influence than he could have ever have guessed. It was a comprehensive list that recorded all of the kingdoms and customs he encountered throughout his journey called the Great Tongue Records of the Western Regions, which propelled him into public consciousness. These stories were told throughout China and became the favorite folklore within thousands of villages. The legends ultimately culminated into the Ming Dynasty novel called Journey to the West, which eventually became one of China's most famous and beloved stories. It has seen countless adaptations and reimaginings throughout history and has captured the imagination of millions of people throughout the world. It's ironic to think that his journey became more culturally important to China than his actual teachings, to the point where most people, particularly in the West, don't even know that Xuanzang was a real man. Either way you look at it. His story is awesome and he was an amazingly dedicated man. So with that thought, stay tuned for the next episode where we continue our look at Journey to the West by learning about the great sage equal of heaven, Sun Wukong. Once again, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. If you like this video and would like to learn more weird stories from Chinese history, why not check out this one on Chinese zombies, or this one on the history of Baiju.
Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'm Wukong and goodbye.